disrespected yet? Does this defense have any heart? Let's no. Go. They suck. I've been telling you all season, they Philly. They've shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me? Jordan Davis, <laughs> Caleb Carter, it's like they shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> They have shit on you. Don't don't you hear me, Jordan uh, Davis, Caleb Carter? It's like they shit on you. Kill them. Oh my goodness! Did he say they they cock it on them? I hate the style of defense. I... Well, good Wednesday morning, friends. It is Hump Day. Mark Holmes here, of course, with Cowboy Joe Boo, and as always, I appreciate you guys. Now hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, so we can continue to grow and bring you the news that is the Dallas Cowboys. I hope everybody is having a great day. Um, it, this week is flying by. This is week number two of the NFL season, and we're getting ready to take on, of course, the New Orleans Saints, and there is a, <laughs> this is crazy, um, a hurricane that should be actually hitting the Louisiana coast, and hopefully it won't be doing a lot of damage to New Orleans. I've been there after the destruction and all that. And also, today is September 11th, and I don't know about you, but I remember exactly where I was when that happened. Um, sitting at my desk um, in my old house, is before I got married to Tracy, and with my good friend who's passed away, Jim, and we're talking about some different jobs that we're getting ready to do and things and we've got the news on and literally watching an airplane slam into the side of one of the towers and being in northern virginia um then you heard the one going into the pentagon um getting my kids from school and literally going by the pentagon a couple of days later and seeing it still on fire is just surreal and that's one of those things that you will always remember where you were when it happened and hopefully all those who perished that day are resting in peace um it's just crazy the thing i will say the good that came out of that was how we all came together as a country to fight the common foe i would love not to have a September 11th type of an event, but I would love for us to get together again as a country and a people um, to realize that it's us against the world and that together we are stronger than apart. So here we are, the Dallas Cowboys getting ready to take on the New Orleans Saints, and we've got all kinds of stuff that's going on. So Jerry Jones is feeling good right now. Jerry is definitely feeling really good about finally getting Dak Prescott. I believe, I believe that Jerry Jones has grabbed back more of the power and the direction of the Dallas Cowboys. I think in some regard, rightly or wrongly, I think that a lot of the things that happened, it's like he gets blamed for them, whether he's making the calls or not. And if I'm going to get blamed for making the calls, I'm going to damn sure make the calls. And it feels like there's a different direction for the Cowboys than just the usual penny pinching. And that's where I think Jerry kind of said, I'm old. The idea and the concept of start blowing it all up and rebuilding um, sounds good if you've got plenty of time. It's kind of like investing in the stock market. If you're 25, it's a great time to do it. But if you are 64, dumping all your money in the stock market, you know, you may not have time to realize the gains that you want. So this is where I think Jerry Jones is looking at this and saying, I do need to be all in. I am not a spring chicken. And so Jerry, I think, kind of grabbed back a little bit, went ahead and got CD done, got DAC done. And, of course, now they ended up restructuring Terrence Steele. The Cowboys at the moment, believe it or not, with the exception of C.D. Lamb not being on the roster because his money didn't count, this is the second highest amount of money they've had all offseason, $26 million. Now, I don't expect them to spend all that, but then again, this may be one of those times where Jerry Jones says, look, I got my quarterback, I got my wide receiver, I'm going to get Micah Parsons, and we've got a team that, that could be a good team. You, you've got one team already that's going to be hurting, 
that you were going to have to fight, and that is the Green Bay Packers. Green Bay, you know, if uh, Jordan Love's missed three to six games, although they haven't put him on the injury report, uh, you know, I mean, put put him out for the game or anything, uh, I think that's more gamemanship. But you look at it and say, you know, maybe Green Bay's not that good. Okay, so there's one of the teams that you were, were, were behind. You saw the Rams go down, and they're down a game already with losing to the Lions and things. So you look at it and say there may be opportunity out there. Um, San Francisco still looks good. The Eagles still look good and things. But you're not looking at the moment, and it's still way, way early that it's a juggernaut, that you may have a chance like anybody else. And maybe this is the time where the Cowboys make some moves during the season to try and get that right. Now, I don't want to sell false hope because I'm just kind of putting it out there. It is a possibility. You have um, the four compensatory picks. You've got extra draft picks. And, you know, with them having so many draft picks, you look at this and say, with all the players that you have, that you may not be able to fill them out to be able to get them all in the roster, so to speak. But then again, we do have a lot of free agents and so on. So be that as it may, you might be looking at a Cowboys team that may go ahead and do something a little bit more. But we'll have to wait and see. So Jerry Jones was on 105 The Fan. Shout out to 105 The Fan. And I want to play about two minutes of this, um, talking about Mike Zimmer and talking about Dak Prescott's deal. Four yards of carry. De- you know, definitely an uh, improvement over the last two years where he was in the threes. Uh, did he even exceed your expectations in, in, in week one so far? Is, uh, yeah, absolutely he did because the one you haven't mentioned, and that is his pass protection. Uh, one of the reasons that Dak was able to uh, be as effective as he were, especially in that first half. Yep. Dak was uh, Zeke's protection. It was outstanding. And, I mean, it was meaningful. He needed to make those blocks. Like I'm saying, those guys were were formidable coming on that front for Cleveland. And uh, Zeke did uh, an amazing job. He graded out in that area as well as anybody we've ever had. Jerry, you guys uh, split the workload and the snaps roughly uh, 50-50 between Zeke and Rico Dowdle. Is that kind of the ideal spot for you moving forward? Do you think just them kind of having an even split? Uh, I don't know. Uh, we'll see how uh, uh, it goes. Uh, uh, the, uh, b- uh, the Either are capable of playing more, let's put it like that. And uh, but I don't know that that has design to it because it has uh, – first of all, to the numbers of plays. But I want to emphasize uh, the the, uh, value of the work that's going on and the reps that are going on with that pass protection for for Dak. And uh, that will show up in some of those uh, uh, big plays in the passing game too. But, uh, no, I think um, uh, anybody will tell you that uh, there are some pretty effective running backs that will run with the ball and be pretty effective doing it. And that's not to diminish uh, that uh, skill at all. But the nut cutting comes when you step nut up cutting. and ask, how about the pass protection? Because <laughs> you got to have it today. If you're going to get your guys out in the routes, your receivers, tight ends, or, or receivers, or backs out of the backfield, then, boy, you better have you some protection from one of those backs that you're keeping in. Jerry, how did things end up working out for C.D. Lamb in terms of the conditioning and the rust after not having training camp? Well, I don't see it. Uh, any I don't see it. Conditioning issues or any rust at all. Didn't anticipate it because they'd done a lot of work together uh, oh. before we got to training camp. Mm. And uh, uh, you, everybody that knows Lamb knows he's going to have himself ready. And so... Uh, Again, uh, I don't think we missed a lick. There you go. Nut cutting and didn't miss a lick. There's Jerry Jones. Now, here's an interesting piece here because um, C.D. Lamb, talking to Kay, had said that um, Kay Adams, that had he not gotten a deal, he was not playing. This is kind of interesting. Contract's done. The ink is dry, so now you can tell me. Would you have shown up if you didn't have a deal in place week one? No. 
Hmm? What oh. does that say about Jamar? I don't even know what to make of it. I don't know what I to mean, say. It's not, it's not really. You can't, I, don't, I don't necessarily say we have the same position. I mean, like we're, mm-hmm. we play the same mm-hmm. position, but in the same position. Mm-hmm. But as for him, I feel like uh, he he's playing it right. He's doing it right. And um, I was going to take his one big game from him to show his worth. And mm-hmm. obviously week one is tough for us because we've been holding out. But <laughs> once we get acclimated and body start getting back in the grind of, of things and um, – Playing football again, it's gonna it's gonna pop out. I have no doubt that he's gonna have a great year this year. Yeah, I there hope he does too. And I get that. You know, uh, final year stuff is different. You were in different. You don't mean different position. You mean you were in different places with yeah. your contract and stuff like that. Right. Just to clarify, I knew what you were saying. The contract's done. The ink is dry. So now you can tell me. So that's really interesting that he was prepared to hold out. Now let's be real here. I don't think that Dak Prescott's deal all of a sudden came together Sunday morning. At 11 o'clock. You know, I think that they had that thing pretty much done, ready to go, and so on. And so we're in a better place, at least at the moment, of getting this stuff together. It looks like the Cowboys are making moves. Now, here's the thing. If you are – we can finally drop the whole blowing it up. We can finally drop that because now the Cowboys are making news, uh, making moves to actually gain more cap. Whether you like it or hate it, this is the way they do moves. And they will forever get killed for doing whatever they do. The thing that's always still crazy is it doesn't matter. It really just doesn't matter what the Cowboys do. They will forever be the wrong moves in the eyes of, you know, the talking heads and stuff because they know that the Cowboys move the needle. Regardless of whether it's right or wrong, you talk about the Cowboys, even if it, you, even if you know you're saying something that's just plain stupid, Mike Tenenbaum, or Dan, you're lousy, that people will watch just because you're a freaking idiot. You know, I, I'll put the clip up and say, how stupid is this? For Mike Tenenbaum, who is a unemployed from his job as a front office and GM from the Jets, in Miami because he couldn't get it done, you can see why when they come up with things saying Sadur Sanders, I see him, why? because he's just a hot name. You literally have nothing basis-wise other than that's a name guy and it's salacious. Um, The fact that you had Sadur, you know, in that game that they were getting mollywopped and you got to blame Dion for not addressing the offensive line and getting his son killed, um, I thought he was injured. But basically, he just said, screw this, I'm out of here, you know, and leaves uh, two minutes left to go to the game. And that's not a sign of leadership. And the whole idea and concept that the Cowboys would just go ahead as we look at situations like Russell Wilson may not get back on the field. Now, he, he may have actually lost his job to injury from that guy being great to now you start now looking at Joe Burrow and his injury history, and they start off looking terrible. All of the people that you look at and you say, that's a great quarterback, that's, you know, you get that guy, that guy, they're few and far between. And for the Cowboys to just say, meh, we'll just move on and get rid of that guy is just stupid. Now, the funniest thing is I'm seeing some of the programs that are swinging from the uh, Eagles that great win that they're headed for the Super Bowl or San Francisco, great win that offense and all those offensive weapons and Brock Purdy and everything else, the Cowboys is like, meh, nothing. So that's okay. And I hope it stays that way. Speaking of that, let's hear the talking heads who, as I've told you, I'm, I'm telling you, there's a cycle to all of this. The Cowboys losing the playoffs. They're the worst team of all times and a big disappointment, even after making the playoffs and winning 12 games as opposed to the Jets that go out and get an Aaron Rodgers and end up being nowhere near the playoffs or or the Washington Commanders that forever go out and get people and never make the playoffs or any of the other teams or the Giants that paid you know Daniel Jones $40 million and he's ass-ass. Of course, the Cowboys are the biggest disappointment always. But we go through that cycle, then we go through free agency where people go through and they get the big names that some of them end up being 
Russell Wilson, or Randy Gregory, who's currently being sued by the Denver Broncos, his former team, as well as the team he signed and took $3 million for and decided not to show up. So we get all all excited about those teams that make these name moves and then the Cowboys make ones like oh, Eric Kendricks how many people were happy about it oh man we did it but you know I look back and say well we could have done that a couple years ago with Bobby Wagner but be that as it may people will get excited about the big names the big signings they sell a whole lot of hope and I'm not going to say that the Cowboys have done enough in the past they haven't but they've done a lot more and a lot better than a lot of teams have. So you go through the free agency, and it's uh, the Cowboys, least spenders and free agency, they suck. Well, part of the reason why they're not the big spenders of free agency, if you think about the Eagles, until they got Devontae um, Smith, how many wide receivers did they draft? Rhaegar, right, instead of Justin Jefferson? Dakota Whiteside? They had to go out and sign... A.J. Brown to trade for him because they couldn't draft those guys. And that's where you look at it and say, well, the Cowboys drafted C.D. They drafted Jalen Regar. Hmm. Not exactly, you know, you're not going to go out and look for another free agent wide receiver if you get C.D. Lamb. And that's the difference of with the Cowboys not spending money in free agency. Would it be nice if they spent a little bit more to top it off? Yes, it would. So you go through that, and then you go through the draft, and it's always, meh, the Cowboys didn't really help themselves. But then the Cowboys end up finding um, undrafted rookie free agents like Terrence Steele, who's a starter. They end up finding in the draft, you know, Deron Bland as a fifth-round pick, and then they also get Carson as a fifth-round pick, who's replacing Deron Bland. So they look at it and say, Hmm, Stephon Gilmore, do we want to pay him $9 million to come back and he's old? Or do we want to go ahead because we trust the process, oh my God, I said it, of the guys we brought in? And apparently, having Al Harris and your coaching staff that knows D-backs, it's one thing it seems like we can keep finding, are really good defensive backs. So we go through, by the end of training camp, after literally trashing us all off season. It's then Super Bowl or bust, which is, to me, the craziest notion out there. You can't say that this is the worst team in the world, that the coach is an idiot, that the running back is old and over the hill, that literally the Cowboys have the best running back tandem if it were nineteen, uh, excuse me, 2018. You can't go through and say they suck ass, their GM stinks, and their coach is an idiot, and then say it's Super Bowl or bust. But that's exactly what they do. Nah, this feels like it could be a season ender. Yeah. Prince maker. So I truly believe we're going to see a version of the Cowboys that we haven't seen in recent years. We're going to talk about them in a moment, but let's let the man who owns the team talk about them first. Jerry Jones, as you may have heard, gave Dak Prescott the biggest contract in the history of the NFL, and then yesterday he was talking about his expectations. Listen. Uh, came. We won Super Bowls. That is factual, right? I mean, it is an accurate statement. Actually, Dak has played eight seasons. Uh, here we Troy go. Aikman won three Super Bowls in his first eight yes. seasons in Dallas. That's the one thing missing can from the resume. Have, can we just... We have a, Can we what? just have a moment, just a feel-good moment? Like, we finally got no. to the point where the guy got his money, and here comes Jerry Jones already making us, you know, talk about you know, Dak on the hot seat, essentially. Like, I just, like, I was there. I was there at that game. Talk, we talked to Dak after the game. This, fi- this felt like elation. This felt like, yes, they finally got our guy. And Jerry starts off the week with, yeah, well, you know, obviously the expectation is like Super Bowls, which he's not wrong. But it should yeah. be every wrong, year. But the it should be every this year. Team has been Under as much pressure yeah. as any yeah, player in the sure. NFL for the longest sure. time. Does having now the biggest contract in the history of the sport, does it increase the level of pressure a player feels? Yeah, I, I can't imagine that Dak Prescott can feel, feel any more pressure than he's felt through the course of his I'm career serious. at every turn. It's been us talking about it, them talking about it, Jerry. Okay, L- let me say this. So how is it now more pressure on Dak Prescott now that he has $230 million fully guaranteed? I, I, I don't see how that is. 
I would say not having the contract would be more pressure because if I don't perform or if I get injured, I'm not getting that two hundred and thirty one million. You follow? That's a, I don't know that. To, I don't think there's any more pressure today than what Dak Prescott puts on himself. But go on. Holding out the money to the last minute every single time. I don't think this matters to Dak Prescott. Maybe it matters to Jerry, but they scored, which they couldn't do last year. All that is improvement. Howie Roseman got the Eagles better, too. Mm -hmm. Detroit is better. San Francisco is better. The teams you're playing are legit. Jerry didn't go. He signed his guys. He and Steven didn't bring in guys to help the squad or bolster the squad. And and Graz was here yesterday saying, well, they believe in their battle. Okay, well, so does every other team. But they go out and help. They're not just asking Dak, play above the numbers, play above the X's and O's to carry your team. Because if that's your ask, these other teams are better than you. If anything, him getting his money actually probably relieves some of that pressure. Right. This is his second big contract. Right. He got what he was after. Now he can just focus on playing and being the best version of himself. In some ways, when Jerry says this, I take it as him like complimenting himself. <laughs> of, like, listen, yeah, not you got to know I'm not just some guy. <laughs> right. And he's being like, every time I give somebody money, it's because they're going to bring me a Super Bowl. Yeah. So that's what it felt more like than, than, than putting him in a hot seat. Hey, Mike, you were there. Yeah. I- did that game in the building, I know how we handled it Monday, mm-hmm. did that game feel like it was more a referendum on how good the Cowboys are or how not so good the team they were playing was? That, the, the pregame was all about Dak and his money. Mm-hmm. Postgame, it was what, what Deshaun Watson was that. That's really the storyline. <laughs> so in that Cowboys visitors locker room, even CD was talking about like, yeah, I didn't really play well. You know what I mean? Like, we, like I just, I, I did okay. Everybody understands, like, that Browns team, for Mm -hmm. as tough as they are, that was not a good showing by the Browns, and that wasn't a great showing by the Cowboys. They were a playoff team a year ago with uh, Joe Flacco at quarterback. That team is really good. And the Browns, you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, the Browns. That team is really talented and very good, particularly on defense. I think the Cowboys should be proud of the way that they controlled that game from start to finish and answered some of the questions. They're going to need to continue to answer these questions, mm-hmm. but they answered some of the questions we had about their offensive line and their ability to and stop defense, the run. defense, yes. They, they play a Saints team that, that just obliterated mm-hmm. Carolina. Another one, are yeah. they really much better? Was that just about the Panthers? This is an interesting game mm-hmm. between these two teams. Teams coming up this weekend. In the meantime, Hawk, you haven't been here for this. I have not. What do you like for breakfast? Uh, pancakes. Pancakes. Yeah. Yeah. Right now. Right. Pancakes is. So we'll, we'll end it right there. All right, good people. It's Cowboy Land. There, of course, will always be plenty of news. I'm grateful. I'm happy. I'm ecstatic that I am a Dallas Cowboys YouTuber because there's never a lack of material. Hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you soon. Peace.